not grieved, men of Athens, at this vote of condemnation you have cast on me, and that for many reasons. Among them, the fact that your decision was not a surprise to me. These are among the final words of the great philosopher Socrates, who in 399 BC was condemned to death by the Athenians on the charges of impiety against the gods and of moral corruption of the youth of the city. Socrates is doubtlessly the most debated and written about Athenian. A highly controversial personality, a larger-than-life character who continues to fascinate and inspire, not least because of his iconic and dramatic death. The unexamined life, Socrates said, is not worth living. Thus, he encouraged his fellow citizens to examine every aspect of their lives. He was the first who put ethics, morality, at the center of his discourse and who had the idea of making philosophy a way of life, a way of living, believing that philosophy should steer our lives directly. This made him a pioneer, a trailblazer, a starting point of modern thought. There are right and wrong actions, or better said, there is a good and a bad way to be a person and to live your life. So through your character and your knowledge of life, you evaluate anything you see as good or bad for humanity. And through this, you live and you act accordingly. For Socrates, the only way to be good and to live a good life, doing no harm to yourself and to others, is to engage in philosophical reasoning, inquiring and questioning everything. And this is exactly what Socrates did. But unfortunately for us, he never wrote down his thoughts. So what we know about him and his way of thinking comes to us through the written words of others, his contemporaries, compatriots, pupils and successors. There are two primary sources about Socrates. Xenophon, the warrior and historian from Athens, portrays him and offers a version of his apology, namely his defense speech in court. Much more significant though is Plato, Socrates' most famous pupil and himself a philosophical giant. In a series of dialogues and other texts, Symposium, the Republic or Crito, he develops a lively, fascinating and even charming persona. Plato's own version of the apology the defense speech of Socrates, shaped our perception of the man and of his last days. So who is this Socrates, really? the man who was both loved and hated so much. The true Socrates was born in 469 BCE. Son of a stonemason and of a midwife, he was member of the lower middle class. He grew up in Athens, in the suburbs, namely in Elopiki, the same neighborhood I'm from. We know nothing of his education. He married late in life, he had three sons, and although he was deeply respectful of the laws, he showed no enthusiasm of Athenian politics. He appears to have spent all his life in his city, except during his compulsory military service when he fought for Athens in a number of well-known battles. It seems that Socrates never chose a conventional profession. Instead, he spent his days downtown, the Agora, in the very heart of Athens, talking with his fellow citizens of all classes, meeting the youth and asking countless questions, knowing that he was providing a vital service. But for this, he never charged. Don't imagine Socrates as a bearded old man, although he was both, hiding away in some dusty study 
contemplating abstract thoughts or distant stars. Socrates was a man of his city, an urban Athenian indeed. He was here, literally, and isn't it amazing for us now to be here, sitting here at the outskirts of the ancient agora, the marketplace, the political center, where these big ideas were first thought and first spoken. While in the city, Socrates' life coincided with the golden age of Athens, with its greatest glory and its deepest fall. Some would argue that his execution defines that fall. Death, disease, a long, bloody and eventually lost war, and the overthrow of democracy brought to the city an unparalleled crisis. Socrates was mocked in public, as a charlatan, running around wearing no shoes, or as a crazy bat. He was perceived as annoying and as a bad influence on the city's fighting force. Certain influential people saw his question as a threat to the city's values and its democratic order, while others saw his way of thinking as the very expression of the Athenian freedoms. Behind me is what survives today of the building in which Socrates was indicted by the civil officials for impiety and corruption of the young. And as this is the place that Socrates spent all his life asking questions, I think it's appropriate for us to do the same. Was he an enemy of democracy? Was he a subversive voice? Was he a collaborator with oligarchic oppression? Was he a champion of freedom and a martyr of free thought? The elephant in the room is the question of his politics, a topic that was avoided both sides even during his trial. As a Roman scholar aptly put it, Socrates was the man who brought philosophy down from heavens. He was the man who claimed that all he knew was that he knew nothing. The man who left no writings whatsoever, but rather a mist of questions around his name and his actions. But who remained appealing, an unfailing inspiration for so many people over the centuries. So, what remains for us to say about Socrates is that we know nothing, or perhaps that we know a little.